Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. I'm going to show you today how to take the hard drive out of um, uh, an iMac. Uh, I think this is a 2009 model, but it's EMC number 2210 and A number 1224. Uh, also, no, it's pretty much the first generation unibody one. So, it's fairly similar procedure for most of these unibody iMacs. So if you've got one of the newer ones which has the edgeless glass, uh, it's pretty much the same drill. Some of the interior bits will look slightly different, but the rough procedure is pretty much the same. So let's crack on and uh, we'll get this thing in pieces. So the first thing we need to do is remove the front glass. Now this is held on with magnetic latches, with the exception of the very latest IMAX, the super thin ones, those are glued on, so it's a completely different kettle of fish. This video will not cover how to do that. So if you've got a brand new one, you've got a different, a whole different ball game. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a suction cap just to lift the edge of the glass off and then I'm going to get my fingers in behind it. If you don't have any fingernails, you'll need a plastic prying tool. Right, so I'm going to put that on and literally just pull up. Oh, this one's super easy, that's just come straight off. These can be surprisingly strong. Sometimes you've got to get up a corner and get a nail under there, but this one's come straight off. So that's literally just going to lift off. Now watch out, um, it will sort of... It, um, I can't really describe it. There's prongs at the bottom that hold it in. Sometimes it comes out straight upwards. Sometimes you have to take it out and then lift it up. Just uh, be a little bit careful and you'll be fine. So let's put that to one side. Uh, now there's two main variations. We've got this one where, as you can see, um, there's uh, aluminium all the, way around, all, the way, all the way around the edge. And the other variation, which I have shown in one of my previous videos where I took one of these apart, um, you have uh, the edge of the actual LCD frame there. But in either case, you've got screws down both sides and a few along the top. So take out any screws around the edge of the display you can see. These are uh, Torx screws. I think they're T8s or T10s. I'll find out in a minute. Those are T8s, I believe. Uh, my T8 has gone walk about. I'll do. Just need to remove the bottom panel as well. Right, now on the newer ones the LCD lifts out, uh, I think it actually comes up like that, but on this one with the, uh, with the, uh, the bezel around it, the entire front face is going to come off first. Now this is a bit of an unpleasant experience, which I've just remembered. You have to press down on the LCD with your palms and lift this bit up. So you've got to be a little bit careful just to spread the load across the LCD. It's a horrifying experience, but you can do it without damaging it. If you're careful, you can apply the, most of the pressure to the edge, which should avoid any risk of damaging the LCD. So, oh lovely, this one's been really easy. For once, I'm actually having a good time. Normally these go kicking and screaming whenever the camera is rolling. So that's just going to lift up like so. Uh, now the, um, what have we got here? The eyesight is remaining there. But we've got the microphone cable here. So I'm just going to disconnect that. All right, so. Now that's done, we've got another set of screws that come out, and then we can take the LCD off. Right, and we just need to disconnect the display cable from here. 
This is a T6. Now, there's going to be more cables holding this on, but this one's got to come out first. There we go. Right, I'm going to lift this up from the bottom. Like that. And I'm just going to have a peer under there. Right, okay. This one has two more cables holding it on. Well, three technically. We've got um, some kind of data connection coming down here. I think this is the thermal sensors. Um, We're just going to have to uh, pull this cable through and find out where that's going. Okay, right, this is sort of ducking and weaving between the fan cable. There it goes. And that just pulls out like that, that's one. And the other two are the backlight cables there. So we'll just disconnect those. And now that will lift off. Whoop, steady. One more, got another set of backlight cables. Then spot those ones up there. Okay, there's our hard drive. Okay, so um, this hard drive is quite an easy affair. This will just lift out, but firstly, we need to remove these thermal sensors. One of the really annoying things about the iMac is it's got thermal sensors everywhere, and you need to be super careful because if even one of them breaks, then your fans will be going like, going like the clappers constantly. And these things are bloody noisy when they're in turbo mode, so ugh. So uh, I'm just gonna very carefully just take away these bits of sticky tape so I can pull these sensors out of the way safely. If you do damage a sensor, you'll probably be able to find a replacement on eBay. However, in the worst case scenario, there is a way around it, which I shall cover when we get there for another reason. So we'll come back to that later. Okay. Right, and now that just bends it in and uh, lifts up like that. And one hard drive. Desktop hard drives like this don't fail very often. However, the iMac is a very enclosed space and I find I see, they seem to have very high failure rate on hard drives. I suspect the hard drive tends to overheat in the iMac just because there's not enough airflow. The little airflow that the hard drive does get is air that's coming straight off of the CPU cooler. Uh, now I like the CPU cooler is there. Mm. There is a blower fan around here somewhere. I think it's behind the logic board that blows up there. And there is like some second-hand air that gets to the hard drive. Either way, it's not enough, and I think the hard drives on these overheat, um, which is why they tend to die fairly early on in life. But whatever. At any rate, that's now out, so I'm going to go away and put this one on test first, just to confirm it, and I'm going to try and recover any data I can. So uh, once we're done, we'll come back with the replacement hard drive, and we'll put it back together again. So, I'll see you after the screen cut. Okay, and we are back, and that hard drive uh, failed diagnostics overnight, so that's over on the computer, backing up over there now. And so while that does that, we'll get a new hard drive fitted. So you don't need any special Apple hard drives for Apple computers. They take normal hard drives like any other machine. It's just the OEM Apple ones have got the Apple logo on. That's it. There's no difference. You're better off getting an aftermarket one because Apple hard drives are notoriously crap. So yeah, I use Western Digital Blues. They're really good value for money and they're very quick. So yeah, there are faster ones. If you're looking to upgrade, you could fit a Western Digital Black or something even more exotic, but can't really go wrong with the WD Blue. Um, so, uh, first thing I've got to do is put the mounting screws on this. So, those go on the bottom. Now, while I put this in, let's talk about thermal sensors. Uh, on this iMac, the thermal sensor, as you can see, is this little fly lead here. 
So it's not an issue, I can just stick that back on anywhere I want. Um, however, on some of the newer iMacs, um, it uses a data cable that connects to the um, uh, engineer's connectors on the hard drive to use the hard drive's internal thermal sensor. Now, to make those work, you have to use exactly the right hard drive. So you may, um, you may, you may need to get either an OEM Apple hard drive or you need to find them the exact same model that Apple have used. Uh, either way, it can cause a bit of problems, so watch out for that. However, if you're unable to find that or you want to upgrade the hard drive or whatever reason, there is third-party software you can use to manually override the iMac's thermal control system. Um, I use one called Max Fan Control, that's M-A-C-S Fan Control. And the great thing about Max Fan Control is that A, it's free, and B, um, you can basically assign um, any one of the thermal sensors in the computer to be the guide for a fan. So, for example, if your hard drive thermal sensor is not working, so the hard drive fan, which is under here, is going like the clappers, you can assign that fan to track the CPU sensor. So as the CPU heats up, the fan speeds up according to that instead. So you still get thermal control of the fan. And good grief, this connector won't go in. So yeah, if you're stuck for thermal sensors, that's how you get around that problem. Right, I'm just going to stick this back down. Just need that to stay in place. Now, where's that little bit of... Hmm. Lost a little bit of foam that sat on top of that. There we go, he's not going anywhere. Alright, so now we're reassembling, so just tuck that cable out of the way and I will put the screen back in place. Right, I'm going to go and give this a blast with the air compressor, just to get to the last of that dust out of there. Box them in first, and then just feed that cable in. There we go. Lovely. More screws.
Okay, there we have it. One replacement hard drive on an iMac. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you soon, probably in the new year, with more videos. I'm going to be doing them more routinely on less interesting but more common problems. So you should be seeing more updates from me in the new year, with uh, hopefully with better camera angles as well. I'm working on that also. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, do feel free to check out my Facebook and my Twitter. The links will be in the description uh, if you want to see more of the work that I do on a day-to-day -day basis. And I'll see you all soon. Thank you very much. Bye for now.